Yes, you can have a few words for Level. And those words will be to express my disappointment with this part of the audience for laughing at the height difference between Ian and I. <laughs> I'm Miranda Hart. In the news this week, for the first time in his life, Boris Johnson doesn't have to lie to his wife about why he's come home all hot and sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> There's a surprise in Downing Street as a member of the public delivers a piece of Nick Clegg's missing backbone. And in Switzerland, Dignitas launches a new service for its clients' pets. <laughs> <laughs> On Paul Merton's team tonight is a comedian who says he first realised he was famous when he was asked to sign someone's boobs. I haven't washed them since. <laughs> Please welcome Marcus Brinkstock. <laughs> And with Ian Hislop is a comedian and member of the sketch troupe We Are Clang, who rely heavily on slapstick and physical comedy to get their laughs. Well, there's no future in that. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Will you, um, please welcome Greg Davis. No one saw that coming. Marvellous. <laughs> And we start with the biggest stories of the week. Paul and Marcus, take a look at this. Oh, right, this is the Liberal Democrat MP, isn't it? Mr Hancock, yes. and that's his uh, Russian aide. Yes. Um, Possibly a spy. Yes. Ooh. Sexy boots. <laughs> um, they they make them be set blatters boots that we're seeing here. <laughs> um, yeah, we're looking forward to the World Cup bit, see how that goes. Very exciting. Um, <laughs> and that's Julian Assange. Mm. And uh, uh, congratulations <laughs> to Russia for um, successfully winning the World Cup in 2018 by three goals to nil in the final. <laughs> So, I mean, this is a mixture of Russia and a mixture of football and FIFA and the spy or potential spy. She might yeah. have been sort of studying a Liberal Democrat MP trying to decide whose side he's on. <laughs> right, yes. He so, does seem a fairly weird choice. Does if it? You were gonna, well, I think if you were going to send a spy from Russia, yeah. whether you would choose immediately a, a backbench Liberal Democrat MP for all the hottest information. You might, seems <laughs> you might, yeah, but they, they like to have sleeper people, don't they? People who sit around doing nothing for years. Well, I've definitely found one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for some reason, Mr Hancock is a honeypot for young Russians. For... <laughs> Perhaps not his most flattering picture. No, that is. That's the best. Is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, how could a spy get through the rigorous Commons vetting procedure for a searcher's job? There isn't any. If you get given the job by an MP, you're in. According to a common security spokesman, unless you write on your application form that you're keen to do some spying, <laughs> they don't give you any trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and no one suspects Mike Hancock of being involved in espionage, though, and why? You, you because our lawyers have asked you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Mr Hancock mm. had a six-year affair with his constituency secretary who told the mail, he's no great looker, but he charms his way into you. <laughs> <laughs> he sends people teddy bears. That's his technique. Apparently it works with all women that he's ever met. Send them a teddy bear and they're yours. Apparently it's licensed <laughs> to climb inside someone. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. I haven't got the tone right yet. <laughs> One MP told The Times, he is interested in Eastern Europe, but his interest is more to do with the girls who live there. <laughs> uh, a Euro MP who attended a hotel conference with Mike Hancock said, um, when he came down for breakfast, he said he hired a local stenographer and they had got a lot of work done during the night. <laughs> I don't exclude the possibility that these girls have a double mandate. <laughs> a double mandate. A double mandate. <laughs> is that a sort of sex thing? <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, and all this WikiLeaks stuff, if this had turned up in your office, what would you do as an editor of Private Eye? Would you have run with it or would you have... Well, like all journalists, I've said, oh, WikiLeaks, yeah, we all knew that already. <laughs> However, had someone given it to me, I'd have put it all in. <laughs> but risking perhaps a trumped-up charge somewhere and deported back to the United States where Sarah Palin has asked for this guy to be executed. Yeah. <laughs> because that'll stop the internet, then, you see. <laughs> <laughs> She actually said that he should be hunted down with the same fervour with which we hunt down Al-Qaeda's leaders, which, of course, <laughs> would horrify Mr Assange, because that means that he'll have to live for nine years undetected in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mike Huckabee thinks he should be shot and killed as well. Huckabee wants him tried for treason, doesn't he? Yeah. Does that work? He's an Australian He's an Australian, citizen. yeah. So, crimes against Australian national interests in mm. America. Has he ever been photographed in a corky hat? <laughs> I don't know what counts as treason in Australia. It's different rules, isn't it? Not being very good at cricket. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh. Nice. Oh, well, that, that could end badly. So, Assange has been arrested in connection with alleged sexual assault. But this is the unusual thing about it. This case has already been dropped in Sweden two or three months ago. And now it's been re-sort of started up by a completely different prosecution in a different part of the country. So it does look a little bit odd. <laughs> the timing of it is a little bit fishy. Um, but then I think we're finding everything a bit curious at the moment. Mm. I mean, the fact that, you know, there's a Lib Dem caught with a woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's being suggested that the row over the alleged spy is simply retaliation for Russia beating our bid to host the World Cup. Well, there was nothing fishy about the World Cup bid at all. No. <laughs> One of the delegates said to Putin beforehand, you must come and see us in Moscow during mm. the Games. Yeah. Before the vote. Newspapers were going on because, unfortunately, it was the people that were casting the vote were lying. <laughs> they were saying, yes, right. we'll vote for you. Hee-hee-hee. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't do the hee-hee bit out loud. Yeah, if they'd, they'd done that. If they'd done the hee-hee bit out loud, we yeah. would have known. That's Beckham might not have known. <laughs> the <What's> others... <laughs> Wasn't at a that... time when we're slashing the money that we're putting into sports at schools, we spent 17 million on getting two votes. Yeah. 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 And one of them was our million. bloke. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he'd have done it for nothing, he says afterwards. <laughs> Do you know why um, Beckham decided not to wear the same tie as Cameron and Prince William? Because he didn't go to Eton. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I didn't want to look like a bastard. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, a B.A. steward. I'm so sorry. A B.A. steward. <laughs> uh, Prince William gave his all in the pitch to FIFA. Did you see it? He included his best joke. And please yeah. listen out for the response he got in the room. I know that we can deliver extraordinary public occasions and celebrations. I certainly hope so, as I'm planning quite a big one myself next year. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Awkward. And you know that was the bloke who wrote the joke was laughing there. Yeah. <laughs> Great, William. Loved it. Loved the gag. It sounds like someone has panicked and gone, oh, my goodness, that's a joke. <laughs> 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 That's what it sounds like. That wasn't that funny, but when they said that Britain had fantastic infrastructure, that no one can... <laughs> that was the day when most of us had spent six hours trying to get on a train to anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Only to be told, no, trains don't go, we can't tell you why, and get lost. <laughs> a lot of your worldview seems to be formed around the lateness of trains. Yes, it's a complete <laughs> obsession. <laughs> get back to FIFA. At least it stops us having eight years of we're going to win the World Cup business. You know, <laughs> stops yeah. us going through that nightmare. I think as well, should we just do the Olympics and see how we get on? See how we get on with that. Start with that. I don't think <laughs> it goes well. I'll have the yeah. World Cup final immediately afterwards. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we get through. Yeah. Why don't we hold it in 2011? We get a head start on everybody else then. <laughs> 400 <laughs> metres. Sorry, mate, that was last year. <laughs> <laughs> but Qatar won it as well. That's good, cos they're a famous footballing nation. <laughs> yes, it's true. Qatar's been chosen for the 2022 World Cup, which is bad for England fans, according to The Sun. Why? <laughs> Does EasyJet not go there? <laughs> <laughs> Women are covered oh, up. Oh, you can't drink there. Can you arrive drunk? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be drunk enough to stay pissed throughout the entire tournament. <laughs> so you've got to really sort of stock up very, on the plane. Very, very precise. Yeah. So same as what happened on the tubes after Boris banned drinking in London. Uh -huh. You had to know exactly how drunk to get before you set off. Yeah. Which is where the delays make it more difficult for people. <laughs> <laughs> um, is anyone struggling to locate Qatar on the map? Because if you are, then uh, ITV News at 10 offered this very handy explanation. These are happy Qataris. But what or where is it? Remember, not guitar, certainly not. 
Qatar anymore. Oh. It's Qatar, and it's here, next to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> what was that on the ITV News? Yeah, News at 10. Oh, how many people thought that the World Cup was going to be held on a guitar? <laughs> Do you know what Boris Johnson's mature response to the rejection of England? Yes, yeah, yeah. The FIFA people were going to get, yes, they were going to get free hotels. The Olympic Games that have been cancelled. They've got, to, they've got to get their own breakfast now. Mm. Was it just set blatter? No, it was all of them. It was all yeah. of them. Yeah. Wow. We're not paying for their breakfast. It would be awkward having breakfast with him, particularly if he had the set platter, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this is the Russian uh, Commons researcher who may be deported from the UK on suspicion of spying. Lib Dem MP Mike Hancock has been associated with a string of attractive East European women, but told the Daily Mail, I have never entertained a woman in my room on a foreign trip. I'm sure you haven't, but have you had sex with them? That's the question. <laughs> Speaking from Russia, Miss Satellivita's father accused the British of having a Cold War mentality. No, don't worry, we've all moved on from that, you World Cup stealing bastards! <laughs> <laughs> the decision to award the World Cup in 2018 to Russia was a bitter blow to England's bid team, especially Prince William, who'll now have nothing to cheer him up in the year of his divorce. <laughs> Right, Ian and Greg, here's yours. Charles Kennedy. In the rain. Ming. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nick Clegg, shaking hands with a few people. They look keen, don't they? Ah. Oh, they look violent. <laughs> and so does he. Philip. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Green. That's a very sophisticated poster. Oh, they're being dragged out of Topshop. You have to drag me in. <laughs> 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 this is the vote that we don't know the result of. It's the Lib Dems. Yes, this and is... And some of them are, uh, are not going to vote with their government. Two former leaders are not going to vote with the man who took their job. Mm. There's a surprise. <laughs> yeah, so this is the country's students continuing to foment unrest on the streets. Mm. Uh, one protester decided to interrupt the Turner Prize ceremony at Tate Britain. Let's have a look. <laughs> Ironically, she came second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the students had an effect. The Lib Dems were jolly worried. But now they've decided that they would look more ridiculous if they didn't vote for their own proposal than if they voted against their own proposal. Yes. I mean, it's quite a fine balance, <laughs> but, <laughs> but they've gone for the slightly less ridiculous option. <laughs> the Times had some advice for the Lib Dems in its leader column on Tuesday. It's better to be unpopular than look ridiculous. Although they have managed to pull off both, which is <laughs> tremendous. <laughs> What's happened to the Lib Dems? It's tragic. Just a few short months ago, they were the Tim Henman of British politics. <laughs> <laughs> no one really cared if they won. Mm. It wasn't important. We just we liked cheering for them, and now it's... Oh... Dear God. <laughs> it's the most fantastic mess. It is. Which is why the students are quite stroppy. <laughs> Apart from being hit over the head with batons. Well, that will make a student stroppy. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly if it's during cash in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> now that it's settled that students have to pay for their own tuition, can't we give them the option of how they can pay for it? When I was at university, at least two of my lecturers were alcoholics, and I think they would have taught me for a van load of duty free. <laughs> There was one particularly predatory homosexual who I think we've done it for free, to be honest. <laughs> Still struggling with the tone thing, Ian. No. I'm just bang thinking, on, if, Greg, if only bang the on. government had consulted you with their proposals, <laughs> the whole funding issue could have been resolved so easily. On Monday, yes. Radio 4's The World at One did oh, a yes, phone no, interview. This was really good. Yes. A man pretended to be a Lib Dem MP. <laughs> yeah. he, said, he said, I am this particular MP, and he said, I'm resigning on principle. And everyone believed him. <laughs> Which, uh... And then, obviously, all the wiseacres afterwards said, well, you know, of course he's not a Liberal MP. A, he knows what he thinks. <laughs> Not going to happen. He's resigning on principle. Not going to happen. <laughs> what actually happened was that um, they thought they were ringing a Mike Crockhart MP, but they ended up ringing a builder. There was a mix-up with some <laughs> phone numbers. <laughs> who then went with it and said, yes, I am. <laughs> I, am I am he. Um, according to The Telegraph, 
Uh, when asked if he was going to resign over the issue, he replied, it is not so much I'm going to resign, I am prepared to resign. <laughs> Just to clarify, the bill added, uh, if, if, if I am backed into a corner, yes, I mean, the main, the main thing, what was the big problem at the beginning was, and then just burst into laughter. <laughs> <laughs> he was doing very well, wasn't he? He's got very the tone perfectly. <laughs> Absolutely convincing. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, do you know which young people's organisation has come out in favour of the students this week? CBBC. <laughs> <laughs> Boy Scouts. Uh, well, so, sort of. Girl Guides. <laughs> well, it's something called uh, the Woodcraft. Oh, the Woodcraft folk. folk. Yes. yes, they're good people. The Woodcraft folk. Mm. Yeah, they're basically if you want to be a scout or a brownie or something like that, but you don't want to buy into the whole Beautiful. Christian saluting at the Queen sort of thing, mm. then you join the Woodcraft folk. Mm. Yes. No, the Telegraph described them as follows: they could be best described as an achingly right-on version of the Scout movement. <laughs> That's roughly what I said. Which is uh... <laughs> they're like yeah. some hippie Scout movement. Yeah. I'd never... The only reason I joined the Scouts was for the uniform. I never would have joined if, I'd, if they'd have forced me to wear a caftan. <laughs> they got, they've got a uniform, haven't they, the Woodcraft folk? Have they? Yeah, it's yeah. made of wicker. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. That's how you qualify. If you can knit your own wicker trousers, Ooh. you get in. <laughs> uh, there were some familiar Westminster names back in the news this week. Uh, David Chater, do you remember him? He admitted falsifying his expenses by naming his daughter as his landlady which enabled him to claim rent on a flat he already owned. And he also claimed for renting his mother's house, despite never paying her any rent at all, after submitting documentation supposedly signed by her, but she was in a home with Alzheimer's. Mm. Nice bloke. <laughs> there is a line where you stop being angry and think, oh, you're so cunning, you deserve to get away with that. <laughs> His lawyers are arguing for a lenient sentence because of the shame he has faced as a result of his offences. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure people are going to get off murder trials by... Oh, I've lost... Yeah, yeah I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> Was your train of thought delayed by some six hours? Please don't arrive yet. Well, at least you had the common decency to inform us that your train <laughs> was delayed. <laughs> My train of thought's now so expensive, I can't even get on it. <laughs> <laughs> and you saw uh, Topshop earlier. Yes, so, um, um, a group of protesters Topshop? have been making trouble for Sir Philip Green. Yes. Mm. Suggesting he doesn't pay the amount of tax he should pay because the government employed Sir Philip Green, amusingly, as an advisor on waste. <laughs> and the obvious answer is, well, it would be less wasteful if you paid some tax. <laughs> His wife is based in Monaco. Mm. Yes. So he says, I do pay my taxes. It's just she doesn't. And all the money goes through her. Yes. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of these students have got the idea in their head that if these people, you know, like Philip Green and companies like Vodafone and stuff, paid their taxes here, that there'd easily be enough money uh, to send people who deserve an education through the education system. But, I mean, that's just muddle-headed, isn't it? <laughs> and the amounts are tiny. I mean, the Vodafone figure is they only avoided £6 billion. That's right. Which, which is you... the total of all the cuts last year. So, you know, yeah. it's just silly. <laughs> <laughs> it was announced... Uh, the £6 billion that they were saving was announced in the same week that they announced they were cutting £6 billion from welfare. So it, it was nice how it sort of matched up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Topshop. Hmm. Everything matches. <laughs> But you're no stranger to the £10 rail, are you? <laughs> £10 for rail travel, Paul. You'd be lucky. <laughs> and, of course, we mustn't forget the weather this week, cos you've mentioned the snow causing... Yeah, it caused a lot of trains. trouble on the trains. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Here's a recording of a woman who rang the police. Hello, I need the police, please. OK, what's happening? Well, what happened was, is there's been a theft from outside my house. I went out about five minutes ago to have a fag, and he's gone. Who's gone, sorry? My snowman. <laughs> what do you mean? What, a snowman actually made out of snow or an ornament? No, he's made out of snow. I made him himself. Right, oh, OK. He had two of my teaspoons in his arms and money on his face. I'm not being funny. I know it's only a snowman, but I thought he'd be fine. What if it being be nice in that? People ain't been walking up and down the road. It ain't a nice road, but at the end of the day, you don't expect someone to nick your snowman. <laughs> <laughs> That's tremendous.
The snowman had uh, two pound coins for eyes, apparently. Yeah. Mm. So that was the, the suggestion that that was the motivation for the crime. And a teaspoon for ears or something. Well, that was that's that's just stupid it's, anyway. It's arms. But if you're going uh, yeah, to, if you were to steal two pound coins, you don't need to take the entire <laughs> snowman. <laughs> so you just leave the snowman blind, would you? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I would. It's a bit heartless, isn't it? I, I would actually uh, suggest. Um, Paul, that the snowman wasn't stolen, it took its own life because it had teaspoons for arms. <laughs> Isn't it much more likely that the snowman just flew off to the North Pole? You got that from that Alla Jones documentary you watched, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the controversial vote on raising tuition fees. The Lib Dems have tried to limit the damage. According to The Telegraph, Vince Cable was given the task of writing to every Lib Dem supporter, which took him nearly half an hour. <laughs> In an interview with Esquire magazine, Nick Clegg revealed that he recently had dog faeces shoved through his letterbox. Isn't it marvellous what you can order on Amazon these days? <laughs> <laughs> or what you can train a dog to do. <laughs> And so to round two, the picture spin quiz. Fingers on buzzers, teams. Oh. Well, that was quick. This is the panda ah, story. Yes. You are right. Now, mm. what they've done in China is mm. there's this uh, rehabilitation centre for... Pa well, I say rehabilitation centre, it's not for pissed pandas. <laughs> uh, but to try and reintroduce pandas into the wild. Mm. And they don't want the young pandas to see too many humans because it makes their, their wildness uh, diminish. Yeah. So they've dressed up in... Um, those fantastically convincing panda outfits <laughs> to trick the baby pandas. Here's a keeper dressed up as the cub's mum. <laughs> Walking about like normal pandas do, <laughs> on two legs. It's a bit of a high-risk strategy, this, isn't it? What if the panda sees its parent ripping its own head off? <laughs> to reveal a human head underneath. <laughs> well, he'll then spend the rest of its time trying to get his own head off. <laughs> To exactly. reveal Eamon Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> they take ages to mate as it is. We can't have baby pandas popping their own heads off. It'd be awful. Awesome. <laughs> but they, get, they showed... <laughs> a few years back, they yes. showed pandas um, panda porn to try and get them fizzy and get them to... <laughs> get them to breathe. Panda porn? Panda porn. You know, panda porn. Do you remember any of the titles? And... <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, David Attenborough was interviewed in The Sun recently about panda sex. Do you know what he said? Overrated. <laughs> <laughs> he says the penis of a giant male panda is only about a quarter of an inch long. Oh, well, no wonder they're not breeding. You get insults like that. You have no, <laughs> no confidence, would you? Yeah, but how would they compensate for the problem? Strap on. Uh... <laughs> They lean back like that. They, 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 they hunch their shoulders backwards, don't they? And hold their stomach. You seem to know an awful lot about this. <laughs> That's why I'm asking you for the titles. I don't know which ones I've got. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what advice David gives to the panda population? Always bring a box of chocolates for your first date. <laughs> Put on some Barry Black and White. Get yourself in the mood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, whatever. Come on. <laughs> he actually says, position is all. <laughs> So what it is, quarter of an inch. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> can't work out if you're resentful or jealous. I can't. <laughs> just, just empathising. <laughs> <laughs> this story brought out the worst in the headline writers. Do you know what they went for? Pandemonium. The sun no. went with pandaphonium. <laughs> Uh, the panda costume scheme may have to be abandoned after one keeper realised, due to an admin error, he'd spent six months hand-rearing a midget in a baby panda suit. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Is this the person in the House of Commons who used a line from this as a joke? No. <laughs> but that sounds a very interesting story. Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you. Yeah. yeah. It's the revelation that speaking to foreigners with a foreign accent makes you easier to understand. <laughs> oh, yes, I did read this. If yes. you put on a stupid accent, it actually works. When you say yes. stupid accent, are <laughs> yeah. you uh, referring to all accents that aren't English? <laughs> I'm referring to the way you If you put on a convincing accent... I see. 
It doesn't have the uh, same effect, because uh, you're not clear. Mm, you're mm. stupid in the sense that you're putting on an exaggerated French, Swedish, Belgian, mm, Russian, mm. Chinese accent mm, mm. and speaking very loudly. And with one jump, he was free. <laughs> <laughs> There's a famous Englishman that uh, has been picked out as an example of this. Well, Blair does it, if he's talking to the builder. Stop. Says, come on in, mate, have a cup of tea, lovely, see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does Bruce Forsyth impressions. <laughs> Lovely wall, lovely wall. <laughs> I think I adapted my laugh uh, when I'm in taxis. What's your taxi driver laugh? Sort of. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially when they're talking about football. I don't know anything about football, so I just have to go, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because people mimic a body as well. Do you ever do that? It's happened once or twice tonight where somebody leans back and somebody else leans back at the same time. It's mm. a part of trying to be part of the social group, I think. Mm. Very much so. Mm. <laughs> um, this story gave The Telegraph the chance to put together a list of terrible accents in films. Can you guess what made the list? Dick Van Dyke and the Mary Poppins will be number yeah. one, it usually yes. is. Absolutely. Yes. Um, is it Mary Poppins? <laughs> um, <laughs> that, Arnold Schwarzenegger, but that's his own accent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what about Sean Connery playing a, an Irishman in The Untouchables? <laughs> He has, he's not a big accents man, Connery, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Playing an English Secret Service agent was quite tough. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that looks like a U-boat. <laughs> I did it quietly. I did it quietly. I just want to try Sean Connery. If I can do Sean Connery's accent, I can't. Yeah, I have to say words that have S's in and then to do an oh. SH sound. Sure, sure, you, sure you say something like this. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, that's quite easy once you know yes. how. <laughs> <laughs> I once, met, I, once met Roger, I once met Roger Moore. I once met Roger Moore as a sort of an award ceremony thing, a film ceremony thing. And I'd never, you know, never met him before. I'd never obviously seen him on television, The Saint, The Persuaders. He came up to me, said the most bizarre thing. He just came up to me and said, I can hear fuck all in his ear. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing he said to me. <laughs> also, the other one I liked, David Attenborough said to me once, You make me pee myself with laughter. Pause. <laughs> But there was a pause. Mind you, I have got diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> right, fingers on buzzers, teams. <laughs> ah. All <laughs> 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 the Yes. And there's, there's James Nocty on uh, the Today programme, Radio 4, who's referring to uh, uh, Jeremy Hunt. Careful. Careful, steady. <laughs> And then Andrew Marr, laughing about it later on, made exactly the same mistake again. And then later on in the House of Commons, on the same day, an MP also used this word instead of using the word cuts. Mm. So, oh, um, yeah. it's true, he said, I just I didn't hate know these that. cuts. It was. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> but of course, he didn't say that. But you have to be very careful how you put words together. I mean, look, you look at the BBC show, Antiques Hunt. Right? You, it's got to be plural. You've got to be very careful. It can't be singular. No. Because it becomes Antique Hunt. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm, just, I'm not saying bad, I'm saying no, antique you're just hunt. saying it how no. it is. Yeah. <laughs> it really was the best Today programme I've listened to in quite a while. Not so much the event itself, you know, it was a simple mistake and you sort of think, well, we mustn't be too childish about this, but the way that Jim Nocty tried to recover... Yeah, so um, we must listen, because it is funny the 15th time, let alone the first, if you haven't seen it, so oh, here it is. It, no. What's happening in the course of the next hour? Well, first up after the news, I'm going to be talking to Jeremy Cunt, uh, Hunt, the culture secretary. <laughs> Broadband. It's eight o'clock on Monday, the 6th of December. American <laughs> officials condemned WikiLeaks after the website published a list of hundreds of facilities said to be vital for American security. Every community in Britain has been promised to have access to the fastest broadband networks within five years. <laughs> Excuse me, and Egypt has called in international shark experts to investigate the scenes of attacks. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Massive cuts at the BBC. <laughs> My understanding is it's the uh, most times that that word's been used at the BBC since Noel Edmonds got stuck in a revolving door. <laughs> uh, what was wrong with most of the headlines about this story? They were worried whether it was a, a spoonerism or a, a Freudian slip. That seemed to exercise everyone. Mm. Yeah. Because... That would make him the Hulture secretary. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, 
which I don't think anyone really thought. <laughs> no, it's not a spoonerism, is it? It was so. It was a Freudian slip. Yeah. Mm. Reverend Spooner, please glaze your rasses for the queer old dean. <laughs> <laughs> that was what it is. No, the problem was the hilarious potential of Nockety's surname without considering the pronunciation. Yeah. So the Mirror had Nockety language. Uh, the Express had Radio 4 slips up with Nockety word. Uh, the male had, oops, who's been a naughty <laughs> boy. It just doesn't work. Yes. Surprisingly, the sun came up trumps with a quite brilliant, wait for it, and rude ma. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those wormy names. It must have been pronounced naughty at one point, and then sort of, you know, generations ago, oh, no, it's knocked. You know, like no. sort of, you know, yeah. uh, some people would side bottom say it's city botham, you know. Mm. It's one of those. Yes. Thank you. Mm, thank you. <laughs> I thought like I was in Dictionary Corner then. Yeah, <laughs> well, we've, we've come up with a four-letter word, funnily <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when See they... you next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> there was someone else making a very public apology this week. Do you know who that was? Um, Mick Hucknall. Yes, correct. Uh, oh, yeah. yes, didn't he apologise for sleeping with people? As yes. well he might. <laughs> He said sorry to 3,000 women he has bedded and binned. Bedded and binned? <laughs> what, is a recycling thing, like <laughs> bottles, <laughs> plastic cups, women? If he slept with 3,000 women, it kind of, kind of gives us the answer as to how his band got its name. It's obviously named after part of his anatomy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, I wanted love from every single woman on the planet because I didn't have my mother's love. Oh, you're not Shut up. that, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's confusing motherly love, though, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> Fairly so. dysfunctional, yeah. if that's what you were hoping for from Mummy. <laughs> yeah, this is BBC Radio 4's Today programme, presenter James Nockety, and the trouble he had introducing Culture Secretary Jeremy Hunt. It's the most hilarious introduction to a politician on Radio 4 since Nick Clegg, Deputy Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> Nockety apologised for the slip, blaming the incident on a certain Dr Spooner. Well, just as well he wasn't interviewing backbencher Alan Fothermucker. <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Just one this week. Your four are Le Cohen, Brian Blessed, Kay Burley and Homer Simpson. Oh, no. Ian. Oh, no, was that, who was that? No, it looks like him, oh. it? The show's been on a while, you could have done some research. <laughs> um, I think... <laughs> it's, um... <laughs> I think this is probably about um, people causing offence or being offended. Brian Blessed was recently at a function at the Savoy and uh, somebody made a rude comment about the film Flash Gordon and he said, well, I'm not standing for this. And uh, he left and uh, he travelled some 15 miles away where he still made a speech and could be heard in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is it people, um, cos... Oh. <laughs> My God, the set's falling to bits! <laughs> How shit is That's that? That's gonna cost somebody £17.50! <laughs> <laughs> That's so disappointing. I've been watching this programme for years and the set is held on with double-sided yeah. tape. <laughs> you think thought, I thought it was made out of marble. Oh, look! <laughs> Are you feeling the pressure right uh, now? Pressure? Yeah. yeah. Did you build this? No. <laughs> you did, didn't Thank you? Thank God I did. <laughs> I think it's important. <laughs> it just comes off, it just comes off. I take them home, I wear mine as a hat. <laughs> this is all six. That's next week's host. <laughs> Yes, we were talking about Brian Blessed. Yeah, um, so you were sort of right with Brian Blessed, but he did something specific at that dinner. He strangled somebody. He made a prophecy. Ah. He strangled somebody. Ah, well, this, this um, character, La Cohen, yes. was a, a Trojan prince. Then he was punished by two enormous snakes Correct. came out of the sea and strangled him to death. Mm. Yes, right. So we're talking... Um, Homer death strangles by strangled. Bart. And Kay Burley <laughs> was strangled by Adam Bolton. She threatened oh, to strangle uh, somebody but didn't. Home is your one out. You've got a team, you've got there. Not, well, we're meant to be two separate teams. <laughs> I know, but are we all sitting exactly the same? Yeah, look, see all this. Yeah, thing. look. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Were you just seeing that? No, no, that's, that's a cigarette. Um, Do you want yes, some of that? so. <laughs> 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 Struck. Don't bug 
God, it's having back, it's having back. So... <laughs> all gone. Yeah, so they've all uh, tried to throttle someone apart from Le Cohen, who was throttled by snakes. Brian Blessed had been due to speak at an after-dinner event at the Savoy last week mm. uh, before reportedly throttling a diner and storming out. <laughs> the diner, as you said, uh, called the 1980 film Flash Gordon, in which Blessed starred crap. <laughs> a bit rude, isn't it, really? Isn't it? And Kay Burley, the Sky News journalist, was accused of throttling a photographer when there was some jostling outside Naomi Campbell's assault trial in 2008. Do you know what she said about the incident? I just lost it. I went mental. I just went... I, the mist came down and I just went through it. <laughs> she said... Is that Sean Connery? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here, <above you. laughs> She said, as far as I'm aware, I did not put my hands around her neck. Her oh, neck. if only there was some evidence to dispute this. There is. <laughs> Sky News, getting it done. <laughs> <laughs> Burley recently interviewed Labour MP Chris Bryant about the Commons uh, debate on the News of the World phone hacking story. And uh, we can see that now. Do you have evidence that it's endemic, not only at the News of the World, but other newspapers? Pretty strong claim if you don't. Uh, well, the Information Commissioner produced a report which, if you'd listened to the debate earlier yourself, then you would know, uh, or if you'd read that report, you'd see that he referred to more than 1,000 cases in, in various different newspapers. I think it was something like... Uh, 800, I've not got the figures with me now, but something like 800 instances in the mail alone. So you are in a position to have listened to the debate and to read the, have read the report. As a result, you are content to say that on telly. I have just said it. You, you, don't, you seem to be a bit dim, if you don't mind me saying so. If you think about the last phone message that was on your answer phone, it might have been from a constituent, like my last message, phone message was last night, re recounting a pretty horrific incident that they certainly wouldn't want to be in the public domain or read over by some random journalist breaking the law. Presumably you've changed your pin, so that wouldn't have happened. Um, uh, no, 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 that's not true. You see, no, 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 look, listen, listen. That is simply untrue. It was nothing to do with pin numbers in okay, my case. That, that was the impression that we got from well, Yates of the Yard. Well, don't lie, then. Don't not... lie. Don't say what you don't know, madam. <laughs> No good going on Sky News and going, don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point of anything, then? <laughs> no, I think you should go on Sky News. Definitely go on Sky News and say, don't lie. I've, I've applied for a job, but they won't let me. <laughs> I think he really took the edge off that. He, he really pinned it down until he used the word madam. <laughs> so, thank you, madam. There's no need to end it with some sort of camp flourish. Yeah, I think... <laughs> Yes, they have all tried to throttle someone apart from the Trojan priest Le Cohen, who was throttled to death by snakes. Kay Burley recently interviewed pop star Peter Andre and asked how he'd feel if ex-wife Katie Price's new husband adopted his children. After the emotional interview, according to The Mirror, Peter Andre was choked. <laughs> that Kay Burley just can't stop herself, can she? <laughs> Brian Blessed stormed out of a speaking engagement last week after a guest insulted the film Flash Gordon, in which he starred. According to the Daily Mail, at the dinner for the Federation of Wholesale Distributors, the guests included executives from Mars. <laughs> <laughs> well, no wonder Blessed stormed out as Planet Mongo has been at war with Mars for decades. <laughs> Now for the Missing Words Round, oh, which yes. this week features as its guest publication the UK Roundabouts Appreciation Society <laughs> newsletter. An excellent magazine, and this month it comes with its own pull out unexpectedly section. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. And we start with uproar at Roundabout Society meeting as Chairman Watt declares love of squares. <laughs> states that Swindon's magic roundabout is not a roundabout. <laughs> this is a report on a highly contentious issue in the roundabout newsletter entitled Is Our Chairman a Contentious Twat? <laughs> <laughs> Next, sex at 75, it's what? A doddle, cos I live at 73. <laughs> <laughs> Straight over the fence through the cat flat. <laughs> dangerous. You should pull into the slow lane. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's something like, it's wonderful if you can remember it. Pretty much spot on. It's great as long as you can remember it. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Next, Telford's roundabout created what? A vortex that sucked in anything picturesque and all sense of hope. <laughs> <laughs> it 
What's actually when Man. town planners' coffee mugs left rings on map? <laughs> This is the 1960s planning meeting that saw the creation of Telford's <laughs> roundabouts. At the same meeting, someone also spilt their tea, which is why Telford has a lovely artificial lake. And thanks to all the smokers, 18 crematoriums. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, I've been asking roundabout spotters a rather teasing question, what? Out of ten, how lonely would you describe <laughs> your existence as being? <laughs> If roundabouts didn't exist, what would you spot? <laughs> oh, yeah. nice, I like it. Yeah, I do as well. Wouldn't be trains, cos there aren't any. No. <laughs> <laughs> there's no trains, there's no trains. Uh, the answer is, is the Elephant and Castle traffic island round or square? Mm. Uh, incidentally, for those of you who aren't regular readers, you may have missed this in the latest quarterly newsletter. Will fellow roundabout spotters please stop asking my wife Linda to accept their subs, as she is now my ex-wife. <laughs> She's left him. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> so, the final scores are... Ian and Greg have three, and Paul and Marcus have seven. I'm sorry. Seven. I'm sorry. On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Greg Davis, Paul Merton and Marcus Brigstock. And I, um, I leave you with news that... Oh, you can't leave a clap like that. That's just... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like we were doing it under the table ourselves. <laughs> I tried to crack on, Paul, no, but I they know. love you. Well, three people do. <laughs> And I leave you with news that after an informal wedding rehearsal at Westminster Abbey, Wills and Kate head back to the palace. <laughs> <laughs> In a bid to appeal to the youth of today, Pope Benedict XVI base jumps from the balcony of St Peter's. <laughs> and at a panda sanctuary in southern China, one of the keepers is informed that the gift shop has run out of backpacks. <laughs> Good night. Claire Balding knows her stuff when it comes to questions on horses next tonight in QIXL. It's Journey's End for Steve Coogan and Rob Bryden. The final episode of The Trip is here on BBC Two at 11.40.